So kicking on over to Image Comics real quick, we have Undiscovered Country number one. This is a book that a lot of people are already aware of, but it's hitting FOC Monday night. It's going to have that regular cover, but it also has a variant for it by Jock, as well as a bunch of store exclusives already floating around out there, as well as some of those you've seen those preview and ash can editions floating at Comic-Cons. Jack, tell us more about this book. Well, in this first special oversized issue, readers will journey into the near future and an unknown nation that was once the United States of America, a land that's become shrouded in mystery after walling itself off from the rest of the world without explanation over 30 years ago. When a team seeking a cure for a global pandemic breaches U.S. borders, they quickly find themselves in a struggle to survive with a strange and deadly lost continent. Um, so, yeah, this book has already been optioned. There's just an incredible amount of buzz on this book. So you would think that, Brian, you and I would be here and we'd be kind of very excited for this one, right? But you mentioned a couple things. Um, the first thing I'm going to bring up is the variants that already exist. There are already three variants that exist on the market. We've got a San Diego Comic-Con ash can. We've got a NYCC black and white sketch version. And we've got a NYCC foil version. So my kind of trepidation with being too excited about this book is are, is the books that are going to come out, the Jock FOC variant, the cover A, are those even going to be the ones that people really want? Or when this book, it's already been optioned, but when it inevitably gets kind of put into production, are, is it going to be those original three releases that people chase? I think this is a speculation trap. I think there's going to be some quick flippers out there that have already started making money off those con exclusives because of the buzz that's around it right now. But I think once this book is released, the fact that it's already optioned, we've gone through this cycle before. If you remember Outcast with Robert Kirkman, that book optioned before it came out, had a 70,000 print run right off the bat. Books did sell when those trailers hit or the first the pilot episode hit. People were selling issue number one real quick, and then it just freaking it went like from up here down. There's gonna be a, if people are buying heavy in on this book. I think they're gonna be left holding because you can't unload that many books within that short amount of time that the heat's gonna be there. Also reminds me of the book Witches from 2014 with Scott Snyder, and that time we had Jack on art. This time we have Giuseppe Comincoli. I'm excited about this book from a reader perspective. I think it's going to be a fantastic story. But I think if you're betting on this book as a speculation book, something to buy a bunch of copies of and that you're going to make a bunch of money, you better be able to sell quick because everyone has that same mindset. Everyone knows it's optioned already. Everyone's going to be buying up copies of this book. And then eBay, the market is going to have undercutters, whatever you want to say. So me, I'm picking up a copy to read. I'm really looking forward to reading this book, but I'm stepping out of this on a speculation standpoint. Yeah, and I would agree with you, and I would even bring up one more point, Brian, kind of build off what you said. Um, when you get into indie speculation, right, when you buy into an indie book, what is that moment of profitability for most of us? It's the moment that a book gets optioned. Look at Gideon Falls. Um, look at Bitter Root. Yeah, there's sometimes there's that second wave when you get like a director attached or an actor or something like that. But the big spike point comes at that initial option. You're not going to get that with this book because the book's been optioned before the release of the book. And here's the other thing. We get discussions going on in the community about the, just the fact of whether or not comic kind of influencers, I hate that word, but to, for lack of a better word, like ourselves, should be talking about books pre-FOC and what that does to the print runs. But the reality is there's nothing you and I could talk about this book that's going to do anything to the print run more than the fact that, it, that it's been optioned already. Yeah, I, this book, regardless, is going to have – we've talked about it, This book's going to have 100,000 print run easy. At least. It may have 200. And I think between two factors. Number one, the fact that I think a lot of – you said it's this is a speculation trap. Who falls into speculation traps? And this is no disrespect to these people. I love these people and that's why we want to help these people. But rookie speculators, rookie new speculators – tend to look at something like this and go, well, it's a slam dunk, right? We're always looking for option books. This is an option book. And it's and got look, a hell of a creative team. Yeah, hell of a creative team, a jock FOC variant that's gorgeous. So it seems like the easiest play in the world. But one thing that like my mother always taught me 
was anytime something seems too easy, it usually is. It's too good to be true. 